Today I want to take a look at Blackboard Learn APIs and how to connect to Blackboard with REST API using PowerShell. Here we have the home screen for Blackboard's AMI Im image on Amazon Web Services. This is a template that we can use to create an instance of Blackboard. And coming over to the AWS Marketplace, we have a little description of the template itself which if I zoom in also includes pricing at 14 cents per hour for a T2 large instance. And really this is a self-contained virtual machine that has everything you need to run Blackboard. So you're going to see APIs for courses and students and all that good stuff available as an image that you can create in AWS. Now, of course, this is part of EC2 and that is where we run virtual machines on AWS. So after creating a new machine, one of the details we're going to see is an instance ID along with the public IP address. If we open that public IP address, we're given a login screen, and the default username is going to be administrator. The password is actually the name of the instance. So if you come over here and copy the instance ID, it's a detail that we will see as administrators that created it that's not available to the general public. So your password is your instance ID. After logging in, in the top right, we're going to have system admin. And come down here, we have REST API integration, we have courses, we've got users, all sorts of things. Let's go over to courses and just take a look real quick at what we have. We're going to go ahead and create a new course. And I'm going to add a third one. I already have a couple of test records. We'll make another one, call it test three. So here we have a couple of courses enumerated and we're populating some sample data. If we want to do API integrations, we need to go over here to REST API under the integrations heading. And here we can do create integration and we're going to have to provide an app ID. This actually comes from developer dot blackboard dot com and this is going to be where we create the application ID and then we grant it to our instance so now we need to go over to developer and log in all right here at developer dot blackboard dot com we can go ahead and do login and if you haven't registered it's pretty easy put in an email address and a password and once you're logged in you can register a new application I'm going to go ahead and call this one SPGF demo and the domain will be localhost. When we're doing queries from Postman or PowerShell or some sort of desktop app, we want to use localhost for our domain. And we'll go ahead and do that, register and generate the key. Now we're given a couple of different key values. We're going to take that over to Notepad, paste it in with some of our other notes that we're tracking on the instance we created. This was our AWS instance, and now this is our developer.blackboard application detail. This last one, the application ID, not the key number, they're both GUIDs, but the one down here that's the ID, that's what we want to copy and take over to our integration menu. And here we can go ahead and browse to match it up with a user. And by default, the system only has one user. It's called administrator. In a real scenario, you'd want to map this to a different account, which had lower permissions. We'll go ahead and use administrator for the demo. By clicking the create, we now have one REST API integration available. And this is key because now we are able to grant access to our instance. So the first part was getting the app ID created at developer.blackboard.com, sort of a registration that happens externally. And then after that, we grant permission internally to our instance. Next, we want to come over to PowerShell and execute a query against Blackboard. Here, we're going to prepare a base64, which is a basic login for basic authentication. And we're going to be using our app ID and secret. So here at the heading, you can see we have two different values, app ID and secret. And those map over to the secret first and the app ID second. Putting those values together, we can do a base64 string and send it to our instance. Of course, we have the IP address here, and this is our AWS instance for EC2 that's running the Blackboard image. So we'll go ahead and declare these values, highlight them, press F8 to execute in the bottom half of the screen. Next, we're going to run a block of code that allows untrusted SSL. This is for trusting any certificate. Highlight that. 
press F8. So now we've declared our configuration and we're trusting any SSL certificate. We're going to be ready to go ahead and get an access token and query data. So at a high level, when we're trying to automate this, we want to declare our environment first, trust any SSL certificate second, get an access token third, and then the fourth step is to query data. The SSL certificate, because this is coming from a self-hosted instance, it's kind of interesting. It actually comes through with a warning of not secure up here in the top left. That's why we need the piece of code about the SSL so that we don't get that same blocker in PowerShell. We'll go ahead and highlight this piece of code. And what this is doing is creating an HTTP post to the token endpoint to log us in and get an access token. The access token is key because with that we can go query data. But to get it, we need to send our username and password, which in this case is an app ID and secret. So let's go ahead and run this block of code to get an access token. And we're seeing an error message come back of 401 unauthorized. That's actually because I was using the wrong GUID number up here for the base 64. When we created the app registration, there were two GUID numbers given. One is a key, the other is an app ID. The app ID we used in our browser for configuring permissions. That's it right there, and that's the app ID we used for granting access to our instance uh, hosted on AWS. The other value, the app key, that's what we're going to be using for API calls. So uh, I misspoke earlier. There are actually two different GUIDs. The app key is needed for automation. So when you're doing PowerShell or Postman, be sure to use the app key and then use the ID number for the browser. So with the app key put in, we can go ahead and create our base64, execute our post for an access token, and excellent news, we now see a valid access token coming back here in yellow. Coming on down to the data call, this is the easiest part of all of it, very short code, a simple HTTP post, and the only thing we put in here is authorization bearer with the token. That's the only header you need. And we can see our data coming back successfully as JSON. So there's our access token from the step above. And then here's our JSON data coming from the step below. That's all that it takes to query Blackboard using PowerShell. Thanks for watching.